Shalom Rastafari in a Wendem Yadin. I am Ras Yadinos Tafari, Ras Ayadonis, and we're in the 19th Torah portion, the 19th Torah portion, which is known as, from the Hebrew, as Teruma. Teruma. In the Royal Amharic of the Metaf Kedus, it is known as Mebba, Mebba. And let's just get a, a little bit of a overview of this because there's a lot of moving, a lot of moving parts that we would need to address. So we're going to go to the scripture right here. Okay, this is Orit Zetzat. The Orit Orit Zetzat. Orit Zetzat, and it's Haya Amist or Chapter Twenty Five, Kute Verse Source, and it says, well, actually, from Verse Two, if you look in the Verse One, is the portion begins. But the key word, the key word we find, let's go to the top of this. The key word we find in the Hebrew, when we go from the Hebrew, so we're going to begin with the Hebrew, then we're going to compare with the Royal Amharic. So this is teruma. Teruma means in Hebrew, gift or offering. Gift or offering. And those who have or want to follow along with the Shemot reasonings and readings, it's on page 3, 361. So we get to page... Um, 361. Let's go to page 361. And there you see it. Let's enlarge in this so you can see it better. All right, so we have Teruma, Teruma, or the Parsha, or the Kufal, the portion right here. So we have this is what we're reading from, and this is what we publish in the Hebrew book of Exodus. All right, the Hebrew book of Exodus. So teruma in the Hebrew is the twelfth word and the first distinctive word in the portion, in the parsha, the kufa, bamarinya. And this is the 19th weekly Torah portion, or orit nebab, Torah, or orit reading, in our annual Hebraic and Judaic cycle of Torah readings. Now it's the seventh in the book of Exodus, or the book of Sa'at, the Orit, the Torah, Orit, Ze, Sa'at. And this is read, this is read in, generally in February or early March, but it's the 19th Shabbat, or the 19th Senbet, the 19th Sabbath, after what is known as the Simchat Torah, which occurs usually sometime in the month of September, roughly around the time of the Ethiopian New Year, or September 11th. Now, the portion constitutes Exodus chapter 25, verse 1, to Exodus chapter 27, verse 19. Verse 19. Now, this portion, it tells of... It tells of Elohim's, the true God, Ha Elohim, Yahweh, or Jah's instruction to make the tabernacle, to make the, what's known as the Mishkan, to make the tabernacle. Um, in the is the Debtara, in the Amharic, the Dinquan. The Dinquan and the Debtara, these words are very, very are very, very um, close. The Dinquan, Bamarinya, is a tent. Basically, the tent. The tent of the me meeting, or the tabernacle. What's known as the tabernacle. Now, there's a lot of words that often get confused. Um, tent is literally what it is. It's a tent. In the in the eschatological or the spiritual theological idea, it's the tabernacle. It's the tabernacle. Also, the word sanctuary, which refers to the fact that it's the holy place, is also utilized. 
Now, the idea of temple, which basically brings in masonry, it brings in masonry or stone carving, the stone building, the stone builders, the guilds, the orders, so forth and so on, which is very, very ancient, coming from the root of the Tobia or Ethiopia, um, is a very ancient, very ancient knowledge of, of rock, of, of rock masonry and stone masonry is, is very old. Um, we know it most prominently in ancient Egypt with much of the, the, the structures like the pyramid and the sphinx and so forth and so on. We also know it by the discoveries in Ethiopia of the 11 rock-hewn churches. So that's, that, is a, that is another idea associated usually, but usually convoluted and, and um, confused. In other words, make a note that what we're talking about here when we say tabernacle should not be confused with the temple. Temple is referring to a, a, a stone building when we say temple. You understand? That's a stone building. What we're talking about here, literally, in its simplest, most simplistic and basic form is the tent. The idea is the tent. Now, this is, very, this is a very, very important portion. Now, when we go to the basic summary, the basic summary of this is the authorization, the general authorization for the tabernacle or for the tabernacle uh, construction. And what you're looking at um, is uh, a Google SketchUp by Gabriel Fink, 2000, circa 2009, of the tabernacle. Let's see if we can get this a little bit. Um, the tabernacle structure. Now, in the Hebrew, this is called the Mishkan. The Mishkan. So that's the that's the active that's the active word. That's the the key word um, Hebraically. Now, as we move on, let's move on to the next part of this. And this is the PDF of the booklet, the second book of um, the second book of the Torah, which is known as Exodus. And here we have the Ark of the Covenant, and this is interesting enough because let's see if we can move this, straighten this out, move this up so you can see this a little better. Um, it says down here, and this is selected from Wikipedia site, it says the Ark of the Covenant, the replica in the George Washington Masonic National Memorial. Whew. This is the Ark of the Covenant as is found in the George Washington, in the George Washington um, Masonic Memorial. So the Ark must be very significant to different groups, different individuals, but coming from the root, it is a Hebraic idea based on the wisdom of the Egypts, because when we look at the hieroglyphics for um, ark, even the word ark in the in the in the ancient Egyptian, the word is is dept dept, or some pronounce it as tebet. So we get either tabot from that word, or we get debta. Let's just give you some of the documentation. And there's an article out there that's called Tracing the Hand of Moses in Genesis. And this is a part of this, um, this general article right here. Let's see if we can bring this front and center. This article right here, um, Tracing the Hand of, of Moses in Genesis. And when we look up Ark, we look up ark. There's a couple of different arcs used. There's the ark of Noah, which is more like a boat, and then there's the ark of the ark that baby Musa or Moses was put in, um, which is known as a tebit or debit, depth. So, and then we get right here to 
let's bring it down to the reference they have here. And some of you all are familiar with this. Others, this might be new information to. But in the hieroglyphics of ancient Egypt, or the Medu Neta, the Medu Inta, or Neta, the debate is still ongoing concerning the proper pronunciation in ancient Egyptian. But the key, as we've mentioned before, is the Ethiopic. Now, right here, when we see if we can blow this up a little bit, you can see this, if you can, it's a little fuzzy right here. Let's see if we can blow this up um, one more time. Let's bring this up to roughly about 200. And so you can see this clearer. So there we go right there. That's the hieroglyphic characters. This is a T or a D sound. The debate is on. It's a hand, actually. Here's the bati or the calf, the calf of the leg. Here is a is a is a half circle or a loaf of bread. You understand? And here is the determiner, the determiner. Now it's it's very kind of fuzzy right here, so you might not be able to see it really really clear. We're gonna try to get a clearer a clearer um exhibit of the DBT or the Tebet, the debit. Now, what we found to be interesting is that if we look at this Ethiopically, this can be the Depta or the Gutta's word, Ethiopic word for a, a, a tabernacle. Also, there's an order of priests, the Depteras of ancient Ethiopia. Then we have another rendition of it as for T sound, and you have Tebet or by morph, morph, morphing the sound, we can have tabot. So tebet, tebet, word for um, ark here. So we thought this was interesting, and there's more that can be followed up on this particular um, significance here. Now, when we go to furthermore, we have aron. Aron is also the word used for ark um, by the Hebrews. So we have a couple of different arcs, at least three different arcs, and Hebraically speaking, three different words used, two to three different words used for arc. And so Aaron, Aaron, Haron, Aaron is a, it, it means arc or a coffin, a coffin or a chest. So this this now makes the whole ideas behind the the ark of the covenant which is you know said to be basically a box but there's a lot of mystery which is associated with even that particular um idea right there because if you recall in Genesis chapter 50 um the the funeral of of Jacob it was was a big thing um, Joseph, his bones being carried. How were how were how was Joseph's bones carried out of Egypt? The former use of this device was as a coffin. So was the ark some sort of a coffin, or some sort of a chest, perhaps, or even a cradle, or even like Noah's ark, a salvation. So all these ideas are overlapping. Ideas and in the Kubernetes, these ideas are Talmudically discussed from an Ethiopic perspective, and we'll try to touch on that as well. But in moving forward with our teaching right here and our reading and going to some of the details on this portion known as Teruma, we're going to follow up on this by looking at this key verse right here, which constitutes the first portion of this reading and feeding where it says that some our elements is kudus ahadu amlak it says egeziabi harim musain and di seal tenagero and the lord or yahweh and jah if you please spake to musa or moses saying sitota sitota yamet ulinzen le israel le george tenagar begeza iju li set ang be libu kami yamro so hulu meba 
speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart ye shall take my offering. Now, in the Royal Amharic of the Metzhaf Kedus of Haile Selassie Bible says, Sitota, Sitota, a gift from the root to give, Sete, a gift. Then it uses down here where it says, um, Belibu, Belibu Kamiyamro, Sauhulu, Mebba, Tekebelu. Now, there's a couple of key things right here. Now, the English, it says, it says, of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. It says, by his heart or in his heart, belibu kami yamro. Yamro is an interesting word because we also find it in, I think it's Psalm 19, when we say, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable, acceptable. Or we can also say agreeable. So in his heart, from from all agreeable so, from all agreeable human beings or all agreeable men, ka miyamro so hulu. Here it says willingly. The idea in the English is willingly, but it's clarified even more in the Amharic. It says, in his heart, or to say in his heart, from all those who are agreeable in his heart, or in to say their heart. Meba. Now it uses another word right here, another Ethiopic word and Amharic word for for. Offering. So in English, we have an offering here, which would be a gift. And here it has another word for offering. Now, this is further confirmed by the third verse. That's where we had um, somewhat presumptuously started out on the third verse when we first began. But this will explain why we, beginning off there, we're just kind of getting straight to the point where it says, Ka Enarsum yemita kebalut meba yihno. And this is the what offering. This is the meba. But the question remains what is a meba? What is this word meba? Now, we recently, recently published a dictionary, a reprint of an old dictionary that's called the Dictionary of the Amharic Language in two parts. It was published by um, uh, the Church Ministry Missionary Society and was compiled by Reverend Charles William Eisenberg in 1841. In 1841. And when we consulted with this book to see what they say about Mebba, Mebba, and Mebba kind of connects with Another word that we've discussed with some of the brothers and sisters, and that's mebacha, mebacha. But when we go to page uh, 29 of the 1841 Amharic Dictionary, let's bring up if we still have uh, our, we, we cut a picture, we took a snapshot of it, and let's see if we have it here to, um, to, to share and to show to you. Okay, here it is in the background right here, so you can see the, what we're talking about. Let's make this a little bit larger. Okay, make it a little bit larger, and let's, let's adjust the resolution a little bit here. Okay, to make it a little bit larger than that. All right. All right, here we go. Now you can see this full, almost full screen. Now what we have right here, this is me, this is ba, me, ba, me, ba. The S is to say like a, a, a subject, you know, it's a subject like a noun, in other words. And it says bloodless offering, bloodless offering, right, bloodless offering. 
the ETH right here refers to the Ethiopic or the Gutas. And in the Gutas, Mebba is Mebba'e, Mebba'e, Mebba'e. So we say in them hark Mebba, Mebba, and in the Ethiopic or Gutas, it's Mebba'e, Mebba'e, Mebba'e. That sound was very important in Gutas times. Now here, it has a little bit of um, Latin, a Latin reference, uh, Munis Sacrum, uh, Quodad Altare, um, I think this is Acer, Acertu, Acer, Acertor, if this is probably old Latin, it might be a, this S looking, might be actually a S, so maybe Acertor. But anyway, it refers to Psalm 51 and 19 as a reference. And the LUD is for Ludolf, and this is a, a radical of this. The root is Bewie, Bewie, speaking good is still. Now it gives the Hebrew reference, and the Hebrew reference is uh, is Boa, Boa, Boa. So what the author was doing and the compiler was comparing the Royal Amharic of of eighteen of eighteen uh, forty one with the Gutas or the Ethiopic root, then as well as the Hebrew. Then also we have right here the Arabic, which is Ba'e. Ba'e. This is the Arabic. Um Ba'e. And the root idea is to enter. To enter. Something that enters. Now when we look at um, mebacha, mebacha, and um, let's just scroll this down here. We try to cut it, cut it um, wide enough so we can also show you this at the near the bottom. Okay, here it goes right there. You see it? Here we have mebacha or mebacha. I think it's a mebacha, mebacha, meba, mebacha. Right, ye word mebacha. Ye word mebacha is new moon numbers ten and ten. Radical of the Ethiopic is bewi'e. So the root really, this is the root of this. Bewi'e is the root of mebacha as well as meba. So there seems to be a connection between these two, between these two um, words when we look at the Ethiopic root. So this dictionary, as we spoke about in a previous video, you know, was a, is a blessing, is a gift to really kind of prove what we've been saying, that this was known from the 1800s, the ancient links between the Ethiopic and the Hebraic language. And many of the academics have been studying this and know this for years, even though one still questioned whether Ethiopia could have the Ark of the Covenant, it must be very clear that Ethiopia's links to this biblical and historic matter is much stronger than any other claimant. But be that as it may, we wanted to give you this background, you know, a little more background. So the Mebacha or the Meba, the Meba, in other words, here is a bloodless offering. We thought this was interesting that they focused on the fact that it was bloodless, a bloodless offering. And then seeing the connection with the with the new moon, ye were mebacha. But there's a deeper there's another dictionary that I think we have as well. I know we're focusing some somewhat much of our attention on the word because that will basically help you know, the logic of running the software of the scripture in our hearts and minds to really see see the full picture. So we're going to refer to the next dictionary momentarily. But we wanted to give you that. This is page 29 of the Dictionary of the Amharic Language, the recently published one from 18, 1841. And those who are interested in purchasing a copy can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org and click on the books link for more. But let's continue with this teaching here. Now, 
when we look at the tent and the tabernacle, this right here is uh, Ethiopian, a schismatic of an Ethiopian, um, you could say, tabernacle. Now, we don't want to get into this level just yet before we first break down the, the scriptural level of the the square tabernacle. But this is a, uh, um, a circular um, tabernacle. This is a circular tabernacle right here, um, which the Ethiopians particularly use, even though the, the structure of it is very much the same as the tabernacle of, of Moses. But then we know that there's the earlier Egyptian um, type. Now, here's a cross, a, a cross section or a cutaway of the tabernacle right here. Let's get the resolution a little bit so you can probably see some of the details, some of the details a little bit better. And let's blow this up a little bit. This is what this is what is being discussed in this particular in this particular portion. Now, why is the tabernacle significant in in this particular portion, Teruma or Mebba? Okay, it's Moses in the mount. The tabernacle is the first part, and what we're about to discuss and what's about to be gotten into right here is the materials. The materials, because we go to the the biblical scriptural quote in the English, the verse goes on after, and this is the offering which ye shall take of them. That this is the fullness of this verse. The gold and silver and brass actually begins in verse 4 in the Royal M. Hark in his Haile Selassie's Bible. But in the English, that's included um, as, a, as, a, as a widow at the end of, and this is the offering you shall take of them, but in verse 4 it says, Work, Bur, Nasim, Samayawina, Hamrawi, Kayim, Gimja, Teru, Bestam, is explaining, enumerating um, the gifts or the bloodless offering at this particular point. Now, as we follow the word Mebba in other places in the scriptures, we'll find that Mebba, one were offering sheep and cattle um, as well and, and living creatures. But the key, we think, of the bloodless offering is that it's not a bloody sacrifice, that even in latter times where the Mebba was given, you understand, was given as a living thing, but then we find a, a different a different usage of it as we proceed more and more from this key significant time. But this is the purity. This is really the pure parts of the scripture and the pure revelations of what the Almighty's will was from the very beginning regarding his son or regarding I and I as the Beta Israel. Now, the general authority for the types of Exodus of Zetzat is found. One, as to the persons and events. Now, what we're reading and consulting with is the footnote of the Schofield Study Bible for this, this section and this portion of our Torah portion reading. It says that the, the types of Exodus, one is as to persons and events. And then it gives a reference to 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 11. Secondly, the general authority for the types of the Exodus is found as to the tabernacle in Hebrews 9, verses 1 to 24. Now, having the assurance that in the tabernacle everything is typical. So when we start to look at the tabernacle, we have to recognize that everything in the tabernacle basically is typical, which means that everything in the tabernacle is a type, is a type of something, is basically um, a material hieroglyph. In other words, it's a symbol. It's, it's symbolic for something else. Now, as the Schofield footnote goes on, it says that having the assurance that the tabernacle, in the tabernacle everything is typical, the details must of necessity the details must of necessity be received as such. Two warnings are necessary. 
two warnings are necessary. Nothing may be dogmatically asserted to be a type without explicit hadith kidan authority. In other words, nothing, we cannot say that, well, this is a type unless we have the New Testament authority or the authority of Moshiach. In other words, the authority of the testimony of Jesus Christos. And second, second, the second warning is that all types not so authenticated must be recognized as having the authority of analogy. So those types which cannot be authenticated are at best analogy or spiritual congruity merely. The typical meanings of the materials and colors of the tabernacle are believed or accepted to be as follows. So now, what we get in this enumeration from the first part of this Torah, this 19th Torah portion, reading and feeding, we get gold and silver and brass and purple and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goats here, and it goes on a little bit further. Let's not forget verse um, verse uh, 5. Verse 5 says, Yeah, fielim at agur, eh? Yeah, aura. Beg Corbet, uh, Ye Acost A Corbet, Ye Gararima in Chet, it says, and ram skins dyed red, and badges skins, and shittim wood. And verse uh, 6, Kutar Sidis, it says, Ye Mebratim Zit, Le Kibata Zetna. Let afachait ana kemem. It says oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. Now, you know we've touched on the sweet incense that afachait an, and the connection with the ana bosom uh, previously already. So you can make a footnote, and hopefully we can return to that point because this is still just enumerating the types of mebba to be given, the types of offering that were to be given. Kut uh, el-Sabat says, Meregdim, Meregdim, le efudina, le dereta kis, yemi derega furt, Onyx stones and stones to be set in the aphud, the aphud or the effort, some say we say aphud, and in the breastplate. Then in Kuter, Kuter um, Cement, it says, Bemekakalacha Wema Adir Zen, Mekades Yish Ruling, and let them. Make me a sanctuary, a mekdes, a holy place, sanctuary, holy place, that I may dwell among them. Now, so we have the word sanctuary, right? He says sanctuary. But as we go a little bit further to verse 9, he says that in the, in the Masayih Hulu, in the Madariyawa Misale in the Ikawe Mahulu Misale in Dihu Sherut or Sherut, according to all that I shew thee or show thee after the what pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And the first thing that is enumerated when we continue with verse 10, it says um, in Kutir uh, Asr, it says, Kagararin Chetim Tabotin Yishru Rizmetu Huleta Kinda Tekul Warduma and Kinda Tekul and they shall make an ark. Now, the Amharic has tabot, 
which now links with what we just showed you from the Metu, uh, the Metu Inter, or the Medu Neder, as some say, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic writing was was the Dept or the Tept or the Tebet. So we have here Tabot speaking of the Ark, and it says, and they shall make an Ark of Shittim wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof and the and a cubit and a half the height thereof and in Kuta Asra An verse eleven it says be Wustna be Wichim Be Tru work Lebto Be Arsum Lai Bezuriao Ye work a Akalil Adarigalet Adarigalet Um and so now what we have, the first thing, so we have, we have the offering is spoken first, that everyone who ha- his, is agreeable in their heart shall make this kind of an offering. Belibu kamiyamro so hulu meba tekebalu, that you shall kabbalah from all of those who are, who are agreeable in heart this sort of a meba, and it lists the gold, the silver, the brass, was that teref, and so forth and so on. Now, why is that important? Now, Schofield tells us down here something very interesting, the typical meaning of the materials and colors. So there is a meaning, a targum, of the materials. The materials are very, very important. So we have to look at the materials as well as the colors as being of very significant, very, there's a significance to the materials. What are these materials and what are these colors? In other words, this is not just, um, you know, like some would say accidental or just, you know, there is a rhyme, there is a reason, there is a reason for it. So let's see if we can bring up this um bring up the ark since we're about to touch on the ark but let's first um touch up, touch on what the materials and the colors what's the significance of the materials and the colors like I said there's a lot of moving parts here in order to explain this as fully as the revelation of Rastafari is showing I and I because it might not be possible in just one vid to touch on all of that, but let's see if we can at least do the best that we can at this particular juncture. Um, let's see, let's bring up the the art, um, the tabernacle picture that we have over here. Let's go back to the to the images right here. So, okay, we've seen that. That's the cross section of the tabernacle. Uh, let's point to this right here. Here's the here's the ark right here. This is the ark right here. This is behind the veil. This is the altar of incense right here. On the left side is the um, mebrat or is the the menorah, right? On the the right side we have right here is the table of show shoe the shoe bread or show bread. So even the position of all these things are significant, as we shall see as we move further. This is another uh, computer-generated con- computer generated, um, um, picture of what some assume the, the tabernacle um, looked like. Pay careful attention to the colors, too. You know, ones think these colors are the American colors, but misuse is part of the spell. In other words, when ones don't understand the true significance of the colors uh, red, white, and blue, these are tabernacle colors, the red, white, and blue, and they also have a peculiar um, significance, a very important significance as well. So we're going to close some of these up so we can get to to an overview of of the sanctuary an overview of the sanctuary, touching on Enoch as well in this particular portion. 
Okay, here's His Majesty coming out of the an Ethiopian um, tabernacle in his uh, visitation during his visitation, and we use that for uh, um, as an analogy right there. Now, what we have here is the structure and dimension of of the tabernacle, the structure and dimension of the tabernacle. Some very good and accurate. Um, details right here. So here again is the Ark of the Covenant, which is the beginning of these materials to be described. And we're going to learn why when Yahweh, when Jah explains what to do, he begins from the Ark. In other words, he begins from himself outward. outward. But when the building begins, the building begins outward, inward. So there's a, there's a particular... Um, science to that that we would like to discuss but what are the significances of the materials and the colors of the tabernacle now it is accepted and believed that this is one of the significances of some of these materials and their colors gold for example gold is mentioned first and foremost i think gold is mentioned at the head of it gold is the deity gold is the melakot in manifestation, gold is symbolic of the divine glory. In other words, the, the divine bling bling or the bling bling in a sense of the divine, of the God or of the gods, the Elohim. Silver speaks of redemption. Silver is speaking of redemption. So the connection of silver and gold would be manifestation of deity or divine glory and redemption, Exodus chapter 30, verses 12 to 16, and Exodus chapter uh, 38, verses 27. Schofield gives an important note there as well. Now, brass, nas, the nas, or nas, nas, the brass, or brazen, is symbol of judgment. Brass now is symbolic of judgment. Brass being symbolic of judgment as in the brazen altar, the brazen altar, the altar of brass, and as in the example of the serpent of brass from Numbers chapter 21, verses 6 to 9. Now we have blue. We have blue. Now, those who are able to comprehend um, Amharic even at a basic level will immediately recognize in the word that's used for blue, so we have these 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 elements: work the gold, bur the silver, nas or nasim, and the nas the brass. Then we have samayawi, samayawi, samayawi as samai. Samai is heaven or heavenly, and that is the Ethiopic um, word or the Amharic word for blue, samayawi or heavenly. So here, this agrees with what the English have in their Bibles as blue, heavenly. Heavenly in nature or origin, or we can say both, heavenly in, in natural origin or in the nature of its origin or nature or origin. Then we have Hamrawi, 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 right? Hamrawi, another color. Hamrawi, is royalty is purple purple symbolic of royalty so when we understand the use of these colors we can see how they're used even in the world and how they are misused because there there are there are certain principles that are firm and fast in the creation of the almighty even when these symbols or these colors or these elements are used um inappropriately or wrongly is still referring to the original type, and the original type, the, the, the code of the original type is contained right here in Torah. So we have purple or royalty, and then we have scarlet, scarlet right here. So we have scarlet. Scarlet is the K, K. It says K-M, but the K. Scarlet is red, basically. Scarlet, scarlet letter, scarlet, scarlet is red. So red means or refers to sacrifice. Red refers to sacrifice. 
So now white, like the, the garments, you know, the, the Ethiopian and the holy garments, the, the white robes of the, of the saints and of the martyrs and those who have washed their garments in the blood of the Lamb. White symbolizes, you understand, we're not talking about um, false racial concepts. We're talking about basic color codes. White symbolizes purity. In that sense, white symbolizes that purity. So in, in, the religious, in the religious sense or in the righteous sense, not self-righteous, self-righteously, white, we get white supremacy and a lot of confusion and psychosis. But when we look at white rightly, you understand, in its, in its original type, in its, pre, in, in its pre-whitewashed um, type, it's, it's, it's symbolic of purity. You understand? Know symbolic of religious um, purity, as it says, like ritual, we can even say purity in that sense. So we have red, white, and blue. So blue is heavenly, right? Blue, it says it's heavenly. Heavenly or divine in origin or nature. We have red, which is sacrifice. And then we have white, which is theological, we can say, purity or ritual purity. Now, as we move forward, as we're going to move forward in this particular study right here, because it's just taking this amount of time just to get through some of these, um, you know, some of these basics right here, we're going to continue on some of the other elements that are to be discussed in this particular portion, like the breastplate, and then to examine the colors of the, ble of, of the breastplate and the stones, as well as the garment, the garments of the, of the high priest and some of the other elements. But the first element that is enumerated here, or the first material, or the first kind of concrete sort of um, thing or item, is the Ark, is the Ark of the Covenant. And this is what we're going to touch on in the next part of this, go into a little bit more detail and get some of our, the other related um, um, pictures that we would like to use to demonstrate our point and to further um, give expression to this particular teaching and, and a, a picture, as they say, you know, speaks a thousand words, you know, and Father Vision, the people perish. So there's certain specific pictures that we feel are accurate or as accurate as, as possible at the present time that we'll like to use to um, further articulate this uh, 19th uh, Torah portion reading and feeding known as Teruma in the Hebrew and as Mebba in the royal Amharic of the Metz of Kedus of Haile Selassie I. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. Shalom Rastafari. <laughs>